understand what I'm about to tell you, you need to do something first. You need to believe in the impossible. Can you do that? What do you desire that you can't have? Now you should at least give a brother a moment to say something heroically clever. You have failed this city. So I have this thing with rolls? Just the end of the world. There's about a dozen ways that I could stop you right now. But I don't think I have to. You're the boy from the circus. I started up a security firm. Finally, a superhero team I can actually get behind. In the future, my friends may not be heroes, but if we succeed, they will be remembered as legends. Welcome to the DC TV report for the week ending Saturday, November 16th, 2019. I'm Liletti O'Hare. And I'm Sarah Netsley, academic by day, freelance writer by night. We're here to bring you recaps, news, and commentary for all live-action television shows based on DC Comics. And we have five new episodes this week, and I screwed up my new title. Not just freelance writer, writer, I'm just writing. Writer by night. (laughs) Uh, You want to go again? Nope. (laughs) Nope. Keep it in! We're We're into it! (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to live with my wrongness. I'm going to bask in it. (laughs) Sarah, we had another light week. Flash and Arrow took off. Um. I got to say, these are gifts they're giving us. Just that extra space Mm -hmm. in my week to consume other media, to see loved ones, to (laughs) sleep. It's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, next week, it looks like we're back to our full boat of seven shows. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> and uh yeah yeah lots of exciting stuff hap- happening all over the place uh <laughs> i will say we don't have any new upcoming shows to report like i feel like for a while there we had new dc shows popping up all the time disney plus and marvel just took all the air out of the dc room this week i think mm, yes 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 uh which is weird because like there's no new sh- new marvel shows on disney plus um it's just disney plus <laughs> well, I mean they're coming, but yeah, uh, everybody. Oh, did you? Did you, you subscribe to Disney Plus? Right. I'm. Excuse me, sir. We're a DC house. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. 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 And just waiting for HBO Max. That's that's the one that's, you know. So I guess uh, May, right? That's when HBO Max comes out. Uh, um, in theory, yes. Yeah, yeah, and then you know we have our whole crisis of conscience and identity, and yeah. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. <laughs> May you live in interesting times. <laughs> oh, wow. 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 Well, uh, th- thank th- I want to thank everyone for listening. Um, uh, I'm glad you hang along for the ride as, as, as we talk about all things DC Comics TV. And uh, yeah, if you... Um, uh, if you, if if you if you like what you're doing, you you wanna you wanna drop us a line. You can do that uh, at uh, Twitter uh, D- at DCTV Report, uh, or you can email us DCTV at WickedTheory dot com. And also, if you want to give us a little extra help, uh, we are part of Wicked Theory Studios, which has a Patreon, Patreon dot com slash Wicked Theory. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can just you know help us out with the overhead and um, uh, there's also a, 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 a podcast there waiting for you, a secret, a double secret probation podcast, um, called Ed Bonds with Bill, where I, I watch James Bond movies with, uh, our buddy Bill Sweeney. And, uh, last, last time, uh, we watched Tomorrow Never Dies and, uh, at Bauer Fett, uh, pointed out on Twitter that I forgot to mention the biggest selling point of Tomorrow Never Dies uh sarah are you aware of this well um, i saw the tweet and it did bring okay. back some memories i think i actually have seen this one yes yes <laughs> it's the one it's the one where uh terry hatcher plays uh paris carver she's fresh like this is she started filming two days after she finished her run as lois lane on on lois and clark um so yeah, yeah, yeah. The media empire, Lois Lane, all sorts of journalism goodness. Oh man, <laughs> Sarah, do you remember back in the days when you know 
all media was controlled by radio, newspapers, and magazines. That's what this movie is all about. I do. I do. It was a good time to be a journalist. There was job security. There was respect. <laughs> benefits. Health insurance. Mm. You know. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going to get exclusive broadcast rights in China for the next hundred years. Um <laughs> Uh, that was the goal, and I'm gonna be recording another, another, uh, another James Bonding, uh, another not James Bonding, um, Ed Bonds with Bill later today. So, uh, yeah, go check that out, and uh, yeah, we get we get some DC Comics TV to talk about. We got five episodes to get through. Uh, Sarah, Sarah, uh, any anything, anything, anything more you wanted to chit chat about? Anything, uh, anything you think we're missing? Anything you think the people want us to talk about? Uh, just that I have recently learned that you can, uh, subscribe to, uh, Hallmark streaming. So if you're missing, you know, if you're a cord cutter and you're missing those Christmas movies, this was a conversation with, uh, at our and I today Ooh, or wow. on Twitter this week. So I just feel like the world needs to know about that while we're doing streaming stuff. Oh, that's all. Okay. That's, that's what's on my mind today. Can, can, we can go into DC TV news now. Can we watch the, Can you watch them year round? Because I mean, I assume the catalog is available year round. If you need to see a some sort of Christmas film in like April, you can do that. <laughs> I don't know if you should do that, but you could do that. Okay, because there's got to. Then again, no shame in pop culture pursuits. Yeah, do you? Yeah, because I mean, Hallmark's they've made so many Christmas movies. They've there has to be more than three hundred and sixty five, right? I, you, I assume you have to be able to watch a Christmas movie every day. I'm guessing. Um, <laughs> that is the idea for a killer blog. <laughs> it's like the Julie Julia thing. <laughs> there you go. Oh, all right. All right. All right. Time to get down to business. Uh, this is, this is what people want. They want to hear, hear us talk about some episodes. Sarah, I'm, I'm going to start the first episode. Okay. 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 It. All right. I don't care. I don't care. I'm starting first up Batwoman. Season 1, Episode 6. I'll be judge. I'll be jury. Kate found herself competing with her father to stop the executioner from murdering law enforcement officers. An injured Sophie found herself taken hostage and left with Mary after revealing to Kate that she figured out her secret identity. Alice helped Mouse disguise himself as a Hamilton Dynamics employee. Last minute reveal, Alice traded Mr. Pandy to Mouse for the coil accelerator on the off chance that Kate doesn't want to join their tea party. Lord, give me the confidence of a security guy hitting on Batwoman. <laughs> that was that was some moxie. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, you know he's 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 keeping focused. <laughs> <laughs> you take the opportunities that are presented to you. <laughs> um, this show continues to be delightful, and delightful I mean like dark and kind of upsetting, but interesting and fun. Yeah, yeah, I I agree too. Um, yeah, we we got a. Uh, I I did like the the who done it. Um, trying to figure out who the executioner was and you know the whole wraparound um the end well, and i quite liked the why done it the that that backstory with the the betrayal of the system and some actual like social justice things about the framing of black and brown people and i i just i thought the the rationale for him turning evil was really interesting and different than i expected yeah 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 I, you know it's it's one of those things where like you know Put aside the fact that he killed two, two, uh, that he killed two people. Like he, you know, he actually did have a point. Um, <laughs> I mean, get past the murder, and you, you make yeah. some sound arguments. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. So you know, um, yeah. I mean, you know, the, there's you know a little, little bit of of social justice in there. Um, but the the real thing coming like are you surprised that jacob hasn't gotten on to kate yet that he doesn't think that she's batwoman yeah i think he's not very smart <laughs> i i mean i know this is the the conceit of all these shows but 
I I feel like uh, he and Mary both should have figured it out by now, I think. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um I just think he's very stubborn. Uh and and you know, it it takes a lot for him to face facts. Uh and you know, for <laughs> for you know, his his worldview to be shaken. Um you know, that's why it's taken him like five episodes to figure out to accept that Alice is uh is his daughter. Um that's true. I guess he does process slower than some. But I still think they need to read Marion. I'm going to keep saying that every week. Mm, yes, yes. And, well, it, it's funny because uh, Mary actually got really close. It looked like Sophie was pretty much ready to tell her uh, who Batwoman was. And Mary said straight out, I don't want to know. Yeah. Um, which is actually in the comics, the position that that Commissioner Gordon has always taken, that he doesn't want to know who Batman is because um, uh, he, he, you know, just in he doesn't want to compromise himself. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think that that's an interesting take that from a certain point of view kind of makes sense. Um, but I don't feel like they push that in in other media. Yeah, it it is an interesting position to take. Um, on the flip side, I worry that we're treading down a Lena Luther path where Mary's going to be incredibly hurt not to know. I mean, I think you've got a little bit more of a defense. You didn't want to know, but I just worry, given her, you know, feelings about Kate and and the the kind of fraught sisterhood there, that it'll it'll make her feel bad. And I don't want anybody or anything to make Mary feel bad ever. I mm. love her. So do it. I mean, if Kate went out with Mary for margaritas like once a week, do you think that would make this situation a lot better? Oh, good question. I think Kate going out with margaritas uh, for margaritas with anybody is weird. (laughs) (laughs) I I guess not. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, the the whole thing, like, you know, Mary really wants to connect. Maybe just 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 indulge her. Just relax one night over drinks uh, (laughs) could probably go a long way. Uh, Have her over for some chips and guac. I feel like Kate's more of a chips and guac person mm, than a margarita person. Okay, (laughs) okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. And okay, some new interesting characters that we got here. First off, uh. Uh, Bertrand Eldon, who played the, who was the executor, turned out to be the executioner, who was actually an executioner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Write what you know, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, my favorite new character this week was Chris the Fist Medlock. Um, just, just that that name, I think, is great. Um, and also the kind of thing where, like, he's someone who went to, looks like, went to prison, got out, um, was wrongfully accused. Uh, and and now is again wrongfully accused and finds himself running for his life. Like wow, like that guy, that guy needs a hug. That guy does need a hug. <laughs> <laughs> also, we did notice that the Joker's name in this uh, universe is Jack Napier. Ah, yes, yes, which is consistent uh, with the Michael. Well, Keaton consistent Batman. with the the yeah the Burt the Tim Burton Batman. Mm-hmm. Yes, and also in the animated series, they did refer to the Joker as Jack Napier. Um, uh, and they mentioned Mayor Oswald Cobblepot, so that's oh, that, somewhere Burtony. That's right, Mayor Cobblepot. Uh, yeah, that, there there was a quick <laughs> reference. Um, yeah, and I truly I, Danny DeVito's <laughs> best performance. Yeah, and I mean that really is the least you can do with with these properties, right? You know, you know, just like if you're going to mention a mayor, you might as well mention Mayor Cobblepot. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm glad that they're that they're making that effort. Um, yeah, I'm sure we will eventually meet all of those people over the, you know, if, if this show lasts long enough. Um, although, you know who we're not going to meet? Who's that? Lucius Fox. Oh, that's right. Lucius. Oh, that was heartbreaking. That's a big deal, right? Like to, to take him out of the yeah, equation. Take him off the board. Death. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Permanently. <laughs> damn. Damn. Do you think Morgan Freeman played him in this universe too? A hundred percent. hundred percent. Yes. hundred <laughs> percent. 
All right. All right. And uh, uh, the, uh, let's see. And quickly, I'd say Alice and Mouse have an upsetting dynamic. The way they don't trust each other, but do trust each other and blackmail each other. Ooh, it's hard to watch. Yeah. Yeah. This is getting really creepy. Like this is. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, the whole horror movie aspect to this. Um, you know, first of you know, kind of like and the way he wears you know, those masks it reminds me a lot of the doll maker in Gotham. Um, they kind of mm-hmm. like have attached that stigma to him. But like and those masks are really good. And those are incredible wigs. Like just Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh was there any news for Batwoman? Um, yeah, there's a little bit of casting news. Um, Christina Wolf has been cast as Julia, last name Pennyworth. Ooh. So we are getting Alfred's daughter joining the show. That should be fun. That should yes. be fun. Of course, she and Kate are going to have a complicated dynamic. Of course. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Okay. Next up, Supergirl. Season two, five, episode six. Confidence Women. At, over the past 15 years, Lena and Andrea became friends, grew up together, and went to Mexico to search for the Medallion of Akrata. In the present, Andrea failed to break into the DEO to free her boyfriend and asked Lena for help. Last minute reveal, Lena asked Hope to tell her everything Eve knows about Leviathan. So I recap this show for EW.com. And let me tell you how angry I am that 24 hours after I posted my recap, I realized I missed the most obvious joke. So let me make it here now. Lena Croft. Oh, my God. How did I miss (laughs) Lena Croft? I am so angry with myself. I super loved Lena Croft and Andrea swinging through the jungle in their khakis and their tank tops. Like women of mystery. It was great. Yeah. This could have been like three episodes. They could have stretched. I I don't often say this, but they could have and should have, I think, maybe broken this up into a couple of episodes. <laughs> that was a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, to have like a side trip episode, um, it's funny. Usually when Supergirl does this, it's, it's you know, the teenage adventures of Alex and Kara. Um and they go in a, and they go, they they went in a different, different, uh, different direction here, where we see, yeah, and we see Lena and Andrea grow up uh, over the course of the episode. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I, it's the kind of thing where like if you broke it up over three episodes, I feel like it would have to be flashbacks. But I really like how how it was put together here, um, and I was I was surprised that that you know they they took so long um to bring all this up although it's kind of like uh what they did with lex last season yeah Mm -hmm. well and we saw some of that um some of those flashbacks picked up where the previous season's flashbacks left off i i I really enjoyed the episode don't get me wrong i just i would have enjoyed spending even more time with them and developing that and um it would have been kind of interesting if they had left that akrata reveal for a little bit later Mm. um you know who's the new bad guy etc yes yes <laughs> so yeah 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 and you know andrea she can she could bend shadows um but it's from the darkness within <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah yeah and you you don't think lena had enough darkness in her life to to have been able to control that medallion if she'd gotten to it first uh y- yeah you think um <laughs> I, I it does it reinforces the it helped a little bit to reinforce why Lena's doing what she's doing because she has had this betrayal in her life but dang how many times is the most important woman in her world gonna betray her and leave her cry? like that's a lot of most important woman in my life betrayed me poor Lena <laughs> poor Lena <laughs> yeah yeah she needs better friends you know this is yeah what's 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 the website that's uh is is that a thing or is that just something they make up in movies where they're a website that like instead of find instead of matching you with for relationships it matches you for friends um i don't think that's a real thing okay (laughs) (laughs) 
It could be. I mean, did you just come up with a killer app? I mean, I don't. I mean, I feel like I've seen that in like twenty different rom coms. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I do not want to have to be the one to tell you this, but I'm not sure rom coms are real life. Oh Sorry. man. <laughs> all right well i i thought andrea's power set was really cool um i'm actually kind of surprised that she wasn't able to break out russell uh to break out yeah. Rip Roar. <laughs> the first time um poor rip Roar, by the way i i liked seeing their relationship develop and you know he seemed like a nice guy and r.i.p man yeah 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 leviathan does not screw around they mean business. They're straight up. Okay, you're you're working for us now. And if you don't, we're going to kill your boyfriend. And guess what? We killed your boyfriend after we gave him superpowers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, how much do you think Eve is going to actually be able to tell Lena about Leviathan? Because I feel like they're very shady and they don't tell anybody anything. Yeah, I- I'm curious about that, too. I'm assuming Lena... Um can intuit in uh, you know she'll she'll pull the the clues that eve knows and makes it all work um but no i agree with you that that doesn't seem like leviathan's good they're not the bond villain who's like let me talk to you for 20 minutes about my plans before i kill you so mm. yeah yeah and um by the end with lena were you i i i actually feel like i wasn't quite sure Especially like the betrayal that it turns out that, you know, Andrea took the medallion. Um, uh, I wasn't sure if she quite earned it, earned back Lena's trust by the end of the episode. And I was actually almost a little surprised that Lena unloaded Catco on her. Yeah, I don't think Lena trusts anybody anymore. So <laughs> I think she's just got wheels within wheels. So. Mm. I just assumed that. Yeah. You think she just needed the money? Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think I think she's whatever she's doing, she's working some kind of angle that we either can't see yet or <laughs> it's as simple as need cash. But no, I don't think I, she's just not a forgive and forget type. That's not how she works. Um, also, if your favorite movie is Titanic, you're for sure too young to drink. That was my favorite flashback moment. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh yeah, we're drinking at this bar. My favorite movie's Titanic. The bartender should have just silently taken their drinks back. <laughs> oh man, man, I remember when that movie was out. <laughs> it was at the actually, I think it came. It was around the same time as Tomorrow Never Dies. They were both ninety seven. Um... <laughs> Yeah, uh, I was the editor of my campus newspaper the year Titanic was out, and we got the whole the double truck feature we did on that movie after winter break. It was embarrassing how hard we went. Uh, college media, good times. All right, I won't mention that I was nine. Um... Oh, stop it! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, man, so. Leviathan is getting stronger. Um, do you think Kara, the DO, is going to know about Leviathan within the next couple episodes? Um, I think so. I mean, they heard the word, right? So they're hopefully going to start investigating. Um, I will be curious how far, because we only have one more episode before crossover. Two more episodes before crossover. Oh my God, you've told me the schedule 50 times and I'm still like, I don't know, one or two episodes. We, I'm, I'm curious how much resolution we get before mm-hmm. we move into crossover. We have two more episodes left. So that to me, that seems like one episode to, fi- to to worry about figuring it out and then one episode to sort of realize the extent of the threat and leave on a kind of a cliffhanger, a mid-season cliffhanger, then go into the crossover, which handles something slightly different. And then who knows what the show looks like after that? Presumably kind of similar, but... <laughs> on what earth question mark <laughs> yeah 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 i mean this yeah uh, i feel like this season's moving fast now like we only got two episodes left until crisis oh three weeks we got three weeks until crisis sarah oh man i'm excited <laughs> all right well, part one of crisis then we have a whole bunch of weeks and then part two of crisis <laughs> Uh, is there anything in cover? Anything? Anything more we need to talk about with Supergirl? 
No, we didn't see a lot of Supergirl this week. I'm wondering if they are filming the crossover. And so that's why we had more of a Lena episode was mm. was kind of my thought there. But uh, yeah, no, this was a I super enjoyed this. I like the flashbacks. I always like Lena. I have a little more sympathy for Andrea. Uh, good stuff. All right. And uh, any news for Supergirl? Nope. All right. Moving on to Watchmen. Season one, episode four. If you don't like my story, write your own. Lady True paid the Clarks $5 million and a baby for their farm moments before something from space crash landed on the property. Angela broke into the cultural center to learn more about her family tree. Lori's investigation led to a meeting between her, Angela, and Lady True. Mr. Veit grew new servants and had them help catapult the bodies of all his dead servants into the sky. Last minute reveal, Will Reeves stood strong and told Lady True that he was in all the way as they watched the Millennium Clock being constructed. And I genuinely don't know how to talk about this show within the format of our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the show is so good i watch it i take no notes because i'm enjoying it so much because it's weird and it's interesting and surprising and i love it and i i don't know what to say other than gene smart dominates every room she's in and i would like the recipe for adrian Veidt's cake <laughs> yeah that cake that cake looked good um <laughs> he's i mean he's just really committed to it i feel like i'd be shaking up the I'd like different colors different flavors he just he wants the cake no well i mean it's it's all about that color scheme that's <laughs> that's true he, he has a brand he sticks to it i applaud that <laughs> i mean to me the real thing to talk about here is will reeves could stand like <laughs> um he just yeah. stood up and was walking <laughs> around with no problem at all and like the wheelchair just seemed to be an act for him. Like what is, what is going on? What, who is this lady true? Who is she planning? Is she the one who imprisoned Adrian Veidt? Like, wow. Wow. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, th- I just never want to see a sea full of, of fetuses again. And the aging, pro- <laughs> that, that whole, it's so cheerfully, monstrously bizarre or bizarrely monstrous. I, I don't know which is more fitting. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, and it's so much. It's so imaginative, um, and yeah, it's ugh. only someone like sick and twisted would come up with that. And like, where is he yeah. finding them? What is this? And he's only been there four years. That to me is surprising. Like I was kind of under the impression that like, you know, he went into hiding right after in 85, right after the squids attacked. But like, wow. (laughs) But like, no, no, he's he's only been in that prison for the past four years. I true. I guess there is a chance. I think there's a chance that he's on a different timeline. Mm -hmm. Um, that that he you know, is, is operating outside of it. What, it, what he is doing is not concurrent with what we're watching people elsewhere doing, but he also has aged. So, I mean, it's not like we can say this, he thinks it's only been four years, but time is being, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I wonder how straightforward that narrative is because it doesn't make sense given that he disappeared. And, you know, I, I don't know. I, that's one of those mysteries that either it's exactly what they say it is and we'll find out what he's been doing or else there is something more to it and with this show i think it could honestly go either way mm. <laughs> honestly <laughs> yeah yeah it was funny like the adrian Veidt stuff it's so it it's out of the ordinary um but <laughs> yes. like, like but like it's <laughs> such a small part of the episode but i feel like that's that's the thing that that really brings out the most questions um you know, like, man, like where, where are those people disappearing to when they go into the sky? Well, and I feel like we got a pretty big hint mm-hmm. when he rolled up that tube and then we, we cut to the moon. Mm-hmm. Um, t- To me, that was a wink to the audience. Like, yeah, if you're, if you're figuring this out, you're on the right track. 
Oh, so I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. But I suspect, I don't know, I'll be curious when those two storylines finally come together. It's, you know, it's going to happen at some point. I hope it's surprising. I hope it's, I hope it's worth all of the, not worth all the buildup. I just, I'm, I'm super enjoying it. I just cannot wait to see how these two storylines and timelines and whatever else uh, inter intersect. Yes. And uh, let's start, let's go back to the beginning of this episode with Lady True approaching the Clarks at their farm. Um, and after that moment, after that exchange, did you feel like she was a hero or a villain? Oh, villain, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. That opening was electric. I love a Damon Lindelof cold open. <laughs> it's so good. These kind of non sequitur openings. Um, I just the the I was so tense the whole time, and Lady True being like, "Oh, the baby will be destroyed." I'm just kidding. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I didn't trust her motives at all. <laughs> Not in the least. Not for a second. How about you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, she knew that was going that thing was going to crash land, and now I want to know what it is and where did it come from. Um, could it be uh, Adrian Veidt crash landing from wherever he is because mm -hmm. he's on a different timeline? Could it be? Mm -hmm. Could it be something? I'm that, just saying. Yeah, yeah. Could it be something Doctor Man hadn't sent from Mars? Like what's? It could be. It could be a car. He's he's returning to Earth. Like maybe he he is plucking up cars. I, obviously, that's not what is happening. But you know, mm -hmm. we've seen things fall from the sky before in this show. Is all I'm saying. Yes. Um. Uh, yeah. I and and how did she know? You know, did, was is this a, a trajectory she was tracking, or, um, uh, you know, does she have? some way of I, I i don't know i don't know man i can't wait to find out <laughs> and when uh Lori and angela toured the facility um and you know you see those ships uh carrying uh, everything and building the millennium clock and you realize like okay whatever picked up angela's van it was it was one of those things obviously uh -huh. it had to be one of those uh -huh. things so how is lady true involved in this um and uh, also, the thing Lori didn't pick up on, um, you know, when Lady True and Angela were speaking Vietnamese to each other, they were talking about Will. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> so, uh, so now they know, you know, she it, she's admitted openly that you know she knows about Will and and caring for him, but she wants his pills. <laughs> Angela's response: <laughs> Tell that fucker to get get come back and get his own pills, uh, like. <laughs> <laughs> this is a show where i think i'm glad it's once a week i think a binge model would be really satisfying to sit down and just tear through it and get answers but making us wait and speculate and think about it is it's good for us this is, this is good for me this is a good exercise mm -hmm. yeah yeah and beyond uh beyond lady true's daughter um we find that a couple of weeks ago a couple of episodes ago at the newsstand that was the little girl who went to the newsstand and was getting stuff for her mother um you know and and to make that connection uh I, I, her mother or her identical genetic clone ooh. i mean let's let's be honest she's got <laughs> memories of like firebomb vietnamese villages right so yeah it's yeah it's the other thing those nightmares like what are those nightmares are those injected memories are those yeah yeah is it is it because she was clones like oh, wow um ooh, so so many questions so i was i i was commenting to ed off air before we started recording i'm excited that this is the show that's leading to the kind of internet sleuth thing speculation that we see in Westworld season one or true detective season one, basically any of the HBO shows that, that w were good in season one and then betrayed us in later seasons. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm enjoying people like doing these deep dives into what can it mean and what is this and what is that? And it's one where you can fall down all these Reddit threads and things. So I, I'm so delighted the show is giving us all of this. Um, can I also say, I love, I loved the reaction that, that, Angela had when um, Petey, the FBI agent in the backseat, first of all, is like, that Minuteman show is garbage. <laughs> I appreciated his rage. But when he explained who Lori is to Angela and to, you know, kind of the, the non-comic readers in the audience as well. And, and Angela's response wasn't like, oh my God, you're Lori Jupiter? Like she didn't, that's not how she 
reacted she she was just like oh yeah y- y- those guys like they she knew them but it wasn't like we think she's a big deal because we read the comic books right mm-hmm. but uh, general america would be like oh yeah I, I guess i heard about you guys right that kind of was the impression i got there i don't know yeah. maybe i'm reading into it but i just i thought that was kind of a, a cool like muted response that we think of Lori really differently than that America thinks of Lori. So, mm-hmm. anyway. yes, yes, yes. And also, I, I think the way uh, her father tried to rape her mother. Tried? Tried? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> also, the the unspoken uh, elephant in the room there is like, why did you take his last name? Why are you going by Blake? Ah. I mean, huh. I don't know. I've never been a comedian fan. So. <laughs> well, I think I think also if you if you reread the book, you realize that the the rocky relationship that she had with her mother too. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, which I thought was paralleled really well last week with the you know the the case, the thing in the case um, when she had that that old cover magazine cover of herself and she got after her mom for doing something really similar so just really interesting parallels there that are built in again for comic people in a way that you know the general public may not quite see all the resonance but it's still good yeah hmm. i love this show <laughs> <laughs> and we're kind of at the halfway mark with it it's a nine episode show and that was episode four so we're we're chugging now yeah yeah chugging along um also what does adrian Vite want with that horseshoe I I what? I don't think we want to know. Um, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And is the horseshoe going to be used to cut the cake? Oh, like what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, man, man! So many questions. So many questions. All right, all right. Uh, was there anything? Any news for Watchmen? Uh, not news so much. I just want to make people aware in case they hadn't found it already. HBO.com is posting things under the PDpedia, which is the that young FBI agent um, is is I'm using air quotes here, like posting documents to help support the cases he's investigating. And it's basically a lot of just supporting kind of fun backstory type documents that, that HBO is presenting, like found files and paperwork and things. There's um, redacted interviews that Lori did with the um, law enforcement after she and Dan uh, Night Owl tried to stop the uh, Oklahoma City bombing, the Timothy McVeigh bombing. And so there's 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 this like transcript that she does of and it fills in some backstory about her and Dan and what she knows. And there's schematics for the thing in the case. You can see the whole like. <laughs> uh, but there's all kinds of sort of uh, found documents and things that if you're a super fan, if you're a comic fan, if you love this show, it's not essential to read it to understand, but it's so much freaking fun. So HBO.com, PDPedia, it's P-E-T-E-Y, P-E-D-I-A. Check it out. Just a trove of fun bonus content. All right. Moving on to Black Lightning. Season 2, Episode 5. The Book of Occupation, Chapter 5. Requiem for Tavon. Agent Odell figured out Blackbird's identity and sent Painkiller after her. Jefferson asked Anissa to bring Tavon home from the Purdy Farm. Jennifer kept experiencing random power surges. Lynn's research brought her face-to-face with Tobias. Last-minute reveal... Inspector Henderson asked Two Bits and Reverend Holt to join forces with his insurgents and Blackbird to fight for Freeland. Okay, my first thought is that Tobias needs to come with a warning label these days. Yikes. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that was rough. (laughs) I physically recoiled from my screen. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, yeah, that was that was that was rough to watch. Um <laughs> like Lynn takes a lot for her job. Um Yes, yes, she does. She does, she does. She's gotten addicted to drugs, she has to deal <laughs> deal with, with gangsters and horrible murderers. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. She's have she's having a rough time. Um <laughs> everybody's having a rough time this is a rough time season Mm -hmm. 
But the the thing with Tobias is he doesn't he doesn't let up. Like he's still taunting her, and he's still oh, yeah. He's his body is literally decomposing in front of our eyes, and he's still just like ah, I'm gonna run verbal rings around you. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still dangerous. Still dangerous. Um. Yeah, and and now he's been rejuvenated. Oh, so uh, we'll see. We'll see where that leads. Um. Uh, I I feel like Jefferson made a grave error in asking uh, Anissa to bring back Tavon. I mean, obviously, yeah, uh, Tavon ended up dead by the end of the episode. But I feel, I mean, in hindsight, it was an error. But I think we all knew it was an error as it was happening, right? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Just like to 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 just, I mean, the risk to get him out and then to bring him back. Um, you know, I feel like he was the. I feel like he's. I think this is the kind of thing where, like, he has to maintain a secret identity. He has to, you know, he he can't let on to uh to Tavon's parents that he knows anything. Um, but it also like that prevented him from telling Tavon's parents. Listen, he's alive. It's okay. It's safer for him to be away. Um. Uh, yeah, that, that was such a, oh man. And if anyone's ever worked, uh, worked in a high school and been around parents, there can be some awkward moments like that. And I can't even imagine what he was going through in that moment. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the, the, this ending was very dark. I mean, I hate to jump ahead to the ending, but, um, that was, that was one of those, those episodes where it, it, it cut a little too close to, um, the real world and it was hard to watch. And also remember when black lightning was on black lightning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is pretty much the blackbird show. Um, yeah. Um, and I feel like they'd mentioned that. Like when the show started, that eventually this is going to be about a family of superheroes. But I'd still, I'd still, I we need to see Jefferson suit up more. Um, you know, I and I'm, I'm hoping like this is. Uh, it's funny, like you know how they separate all these seasons into books, and you know, mm-hmm. this is the longest book that they've done. Um, you know, usually the books last like three or four episodes, and this one's been five. Um. And I'm going to be excited to see, you know, the, they're, they are starting a new book in the, uh, next week. So, um, and I feel like this occupation was still too long. Like it's, yeah. it's been five episodes. It should have been, it should have been three. Um, mm-hmm. But to get, to get where we were, I mean, this is, this is, this is a really heavy show. Um, <laughs> yes. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now Anissa's, Anissa's got painkiller coming after her. Like this is, oh, this is gonna be. And then once, and then once Jennifer finds out, I mean, I, everyone in this show needs a vacation. Uh, <laughs> a spa day, drinks with umbrellas. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and yeah, and it's it's weird that like. Uh, Jennifer still hasn't really gotten control of her powers, and now I'm wondering if someone's hijacking them. Like, like is is this because someone 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 from the ASA is doing something to her to her that's causing all these flare ups? Um, well, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. I kind of figured it was just sort of teen hormone metaphor. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uncontrollable power surge stuff, but. That I mean the ASA, yeah, I would not put that past him. Because nice. I feel, because I feel like last season was all about her getting her powers under control. Um, you know, with with what, what was the name of the the woman who was helping her? Oh yeah, Dream Woman. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and and she's nowhere to be found now. Um, and I feel like we're kind of going through through it all over again. Um. Yeah, like like I feel like she should have she shouldn't gotten a better handle on it by now. Um but yeah, yeah, yeah. And all this stuff with Agent Odell. Um but yeah, we got we got we got stuff going on with Black Lightning. Um 
you know, but I think we're heading in the right direction. Uh, I do like that at the end, the three people who come together and like, we're ready to fight for Freeland are three people who are not powered. Yes. You know, and it feels like you have Inspector Henderson, Reverend Holt and two bits who are sort of like the three different sides of Freeland that we've seen over the course of the, of the past two and a half seasons. Um, uh, and like, I'm, I'm very interested to see how, how all of this goes down uh, and how they plan to fight back. Uh, Henderson also deserves a spa day for sure. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's another guy who, who someone needs to give him a hug. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Poor man. <laughs> but he took it. He kept his head. He kept his head up. Uh, and uh yeah yeah even though he's not very well liked in freeland uh and i'm hoping that changes <laughs> soon <laughs> uh do we cover everything is there anything we haven't really discussed with black lightning i think we did i think we did okay all right was there any, any news for black lightning uh nope 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 uh, all right so we got one show left sarah we do we one show left and that show is titans Season 2, Episode 11, E-L underscore O. All of our female heroes found themselves being drawn to the Elko Diner in Nevada. Dick was sick in solitary, arguing with imaginary Bruce. Jason and Rose crashed a gorgeous Oceanside house near Gotham, and angsty feelings ensued. Last minute reveal... Gar figured out he was in a simulation and ate the Cadmus doctor posing as Rachel. Uh, Did you expect to see Gar's brain? (laughs) (laughs) I did not. (laughs) (laughs) No, the opening of that show where he's like in brain surgery and that's how they're tapping information is literally probing into his brain. Like, oh, oh. at one point it sort of like jiggled in a way that I found very upsetting. Yes, 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 yes. Cadmus is horrible people. Cadmus is <laughs> Cadmus are horrible people. Mercy Graves needs to be stopped. Like, oh man, man. And now that and little now smile on her face at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she she made Gar do the one thing he never thought he was gonna do, which is eat pe- which is eat somebody. I felt so but, bad. You know, when you realize that wasn't about getting information from him, that was about pushing him to the brink. Um yeah. Uh, 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 uh. But, you know, Donna and Dawn are coming to help him out. That, that, should, that should be a blast when they show up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this, this was this was weird because, like, I, I, I ended up using all six markers when I'm taking notes for this episode because I like to color. For those who don't know, when I when I take notes in a show, I like to color code uh, all the storylines. Um my notes just say LOL and yikes. Like that's, <laughs> this is how we're different. <laughs> but, you know, seeing like Dawn and Donna and Rachel and Corey all in completely different places. Um, and uh, just to, just to, to talk about the different things. So, so Dawn is just driving away from Hank and she dumps all of his stuff on a farm somewhere and just, just keeps a pic of the Titan, a picture of the Titans. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, just going through, through Wyoming and then decides, eh, you know, let me just go to Nevada. Um, and uh, Donna, it finds Titans tower trashed and then gets like a scrambled voicemail from Rachel. Um, and Corey, you know, Sarah, I'm just going to let you talk about what Corey, what happened to Corey this episode. She wanted donuts, okay? God, just <laughs> let her have her donuts. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about what happened to her in that Vegas hotel suite. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so she she goes back to a room with a handsome man who's got abs. And he then he offers, he says he takes all kinds of insurance and tries to have a therapy session with her. Man, Corey just wants... A little bit of happiness for Corey. And instead, she gets hot shirtless guy being like, I take Blue Cross Blue Shield. Poor Corey. <laughs> take off your pants, sir. 
Nobody wants your insurance talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Could you, sh- could you like, hey, that, that, was, that was real stupidity on his part. Like, I feel. <laughs> Dude, like you're blowing having... it. <laughs> you're, you're having second thoughts. You're having second thoughts. You know, or, you know, <laughs> at least every, like, like big, <laughs> every movie scene like this I've ever seen in, like, an action movie or a spy movie, the psychoanalysis comes out after the sex like isn't that the thing it's you're in bed together naked under the sheets and then and, and the, the, L, the l-shaped sheets the l-shaped yes. because it's got to cover the lady from the neck down but the dude from the waist down so mm-hmm. capital l yeah and I, I, I believe it's usually the go- the girl that says it to the guy like you're we're only doing this because you hate yourself um <laughs> Are you still thinking about your dead partner? Yeah, that shoe that was rough. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Corey, Corey had, I guess, the female equivalent of blue balls in that moment. Um, <laughs> Sir, um, take off your pants. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. First off, <laughs> waking up at an arcade. Um, <laughs> then Corey, yeah, Corey had Corey had like the full gamut of emotions in this episode. <laughs> yes. I just love how much the set designer on Titans loves pinball machines. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, all of those storylines were going, on. and then you had Rachel who had the tarot card reading from Danny, um, and we we just ignored the fact that rachel killed her dad um we we're just yeah, gonna like push over. past it um so yeah everything's going to this this diner in elko nevada um and like i i i don't i don't care with with that with that commercial that Corey saw the the fact that they did not make donuts that is a crime that is a real crime i just is- don't understand i mean i <sighs> yeah <laughs> I mean, but, when you walk you know, in there, when you walk she, in there, I'm not surprised, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was clearly not a donut place, but she did. At least she expressed her needs. She said, listen, you do you have flour and butter and sugar? Do you have lard to fry them in? Then go. You go and you make me donuts. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And it turns out it was all a ruse planned by Bruce Wayne. Real Bruce Wayne. Did you get really excited that that was real Bruce Wayne? I, I did. I did. I got really me excited. Um, like, Which makes me think, did Bruce make that commercial? And did he not know or care that they don't do donuts? Is that on Bruce? I think so. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All that was weird. Um, so, yeah, you basically said, yeah, yeah. Dick's, Dick's in prison. He's going to die. Um, you guys need to help him. And then he just grabs a jelly donut and drives off into, into the middle of nowhere. It, it was bizarre enough that it almost made me wonder which of these women is having the dream sequence. Mm-hmm. Like, is there any way that next episode it's going to be because it was so bizarre? Yeah, I, I almost feel like this might be Rachel's powers at work. Um, it might be something created by them. But um the idea that there are two different imaginary Bruce Waynes uh, feels like a little far fetched to me. One <laughs> a little is bit enough. Stretch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One is enough. Uh, uh, but yeah, yeah. I, 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 I thought the way that came together, and we're still reflecting everyone's emotional baggage in this episode. I thought that was well done. Mm-hmm. Um. So, are you are you ready to talk about um? Uh, the teen soap opera that is J- that is uh, Jason and Rose. Look, here's all I'm going to say about that. Everybody knows how badly West Side Story ends, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and Rose is a real jerk. She's being a real <laughs> ass. <laughs> well, she's had she's had a time. Like I, she has mitigating. That would be post coitally. Like, hey, babe, what's going on in your head? Well. My dad killed my brother, and <laughs> how much time do you have? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and also she calls up 
you know, we, we found out that she's been working with Slade the whole time, that this was actually part of the plan. Um, and she just abandons that. And also at that point, like, does she, is she talking with Slade or is she, does she think, does she know that she might be talking to Jericho in that moment? I genuinely don't know. I, I actually was attuned to that and it was not clear to me. Did you have a thought either way? I think she knows it's Jericho. I think, and I think that's the only reason she's helping him. Yeah. Um, and she finally realized that he's he's hell bent on revenge, and it's not worth it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm actually interested to see like if she if she sticks with with Jason now, or if she's just going to run off on her own completely. Um, I'm always a fan of not sticking with Jason. Sorry, sorry, Jason. <laughs> that dude Man. is. I feel like he's he's just not. He's he's going to lead to trouble. Normally, I would agree with you, but this episode, he really tried. Like he, he did. that's true. He really put his best foot forward. He brought her into that, like you know, high school auditorium loft, and like try, he really tried to open open himself up, and yeah, and she was just not up for any of it. Um, bless his heart. I, I felt bad for him. Just saying. Yeah. Um. Um, now the real storyline, like the, to me, like the big main storyline in here was Dick in prison arguing with, with Bruce. Uh, Again. Yeah. Dick is sick. The prison guards are only leaving him rats to eat. Um, <laughs> that's just so mean, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, the, the fight sequence, which was all in Dick's head between him and Bruce. I thought that was that was very well done. I thought that was mm-hmm. really cool. And for an episode that did not really have a dramatic or an action climax, like there was no there was no real heavy um like danger, there was no there was no bad guy, all the all the all the drama that, that was going on was like ex- existential and emotional. Um that to 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 bring this down to a psychological fight between Dick and his image of Bruce. I thought that was well done. Yeah. I, my household is not a household that has a lot of patience for dream sequences. And yet these Bruce episodes have been good and interesting and enjoyable. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm intrigued by that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And also like at the end when he stood up and he saw like the shadow, it looked, made him look like he had wings. Uh-huh. Like, like it's, it's really going into like, he's, you know, he talks about becoming a bird of prey. Like Nightwing is coming. Nightwing like, is coming. Yeah. And it better be here next, next episode. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm running out of patience. It's taken him two seasons to get, to become Nightwing. Like, let's do this. Come on. <laughs> I want a uh, whole episode of him sketching his dream costume. <laughs> and it's really the simplest costume it's it's all black which is a blue line going across his chest like that's <laughs> there's not a lot there um <laughs> but that's fine uh all right any uh uh news for titans uh we're getting a season three yay yay not that big a surprise. I feel like they're really, you know, kind of setting this up as the the flagship show. But uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not setting it up. It is set up. It's the flagship show. It's Titans. <laughs> yeah, and it's going to be on DC Universe. Um, yes, I am so confused. <laughs> yes, why do Patrol uh, on HBO Max? Why not? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, I will say I did get an email from DC Universe because uh, my subscription is up thanking me. Oh, me and too. They, yeah. Yeah. But they also, they reduced the yearly rate from $75 to $59.99. Um, so they did lower the price. And I don't know if they're doing that for everybody or is that just a word to people who subscribed uh, to them from the beginning. Um, but I, I thought that was kind of cool. I I didn't know if that meant good things for the service or not, though. You mm. know, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm I'm almost wondering. I mean, I guess we'll find out in May because I I know with Disney Plus, if you're an ESPN Plus subscriber and you go for that big bundle, they credit you back on you know whatever the difference would have been for your subscription. So 
you know, I guess we'll see how that plays out. Um, but, all right, all right. Yeah. So that's Titans. Uh, it's Titans, and I guess DC Universe news. Let's head into news for other shows. <laughs> Okay, uh, now we have exclusively CW News shows. Uh, on the crossover, we are seeing some fir official first looks. We have some teasers, uh, teasers specific to Black Lightning, to Legends of Tomorrow, to Arrow, uh, but all of them showing all these superheroes coming together. Very short, very fun. I cannot wait. And we also have a big cache of photos that got released from the Supergirl episode of the crossover. So you see a lot of these interactions and things. It's just so many capes so many capes in one place bring it on <laughs> i'm ready for this let's go i know let's go let's go uh let's see arrow wise um the show wrapped filming forever this past week <gasps> yeah it led to a lot of reflective and sad media social media posts by the cast and the crew but uh yeah that's that's a wrap on arrow and i'm i'm sad i'm sad <laughs> we also uh, know the final two words of spoken dialogue in the final episode of arrow uh mark guggenheim tweeted those out those last two words of dialogue are to you Ooh. and this immediately led to the speculation machine starting up and it does make sense for that to be oliver passing on his bow his legacy to somebody else i'm giving this to you if we're going to do a green arrow and the canaries spinoff would make sense to give it to Mia. If, mm. if one were to be a betting man or woman, that feels right. But uh, yeah, that's arrows. They're really going to end it on us. This is really happening. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All right. All right. And then um, the flash. Ed, are, are you ready? Why? What's that? We, we have some news you and I have been waiting for for a long time, and that is we have an actress cast for Sue Dearborn. <gasps> wow. I, I know. It's... it's it's really happening. It's Natalie Dreyfus. Uh, <laughs> she's an actress on the originals, among other shows. I don't know that I've seen her in anything. Question mark. Mm -hmm. How about you? Uh, not not that I can remember, but I saw the picture. She looks she she looks cute. Um, and, uh, and yeah, 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 yeah. I almost, um, I, I'm almost wondering if like she's out of Hartley Sawyer's league, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> Hartley Sawyer is a handsome man. He just plays kind of a goofy guy. It's not his fault. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm, I can't wait for this storyline. I'm guessing it's probably going to happen. Um, you know, uh, after, after the winter break. So, you know, we probably won't get back to that in like January or February, but like, the fact that they've cast her it's all right all right this is gonna happen this is gonna be cool well you know i think it's good we we've been looking forward to the crisis the crossover for so long would we have anything to look forward to after that if not for you know the arrival of sue who knows so mm. Mm -hmm. uh another, another tiny bit of flash news daniel panabaker is pregnant with her first child so that's exciting now does this mean that we're gonna see caitlin slash killer frost standing behind a big potted plant uh, for months and months, maybe. <laughs> but good for her. Good for you, Danielle. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yay. All Yay. right. <laughs> and that's all it right. for the news. Wow. That's all the news. Wow. That means now it's time for our winners of the week. Uh, um, I'll go first because mine is ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> oh, it is 100% uh, Corey's love of donuts. <laughs> <laughs> it tickled me so much this week. She got violent with that poor woman. Like, you make me those, you get in that kitchen and you make me those donuts. Good for her. I get that. I've been there. I get that. I appreciate that Corey might not be happy to be stuck on Earth, but she's found some comfort. Good for her. That's Good for her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, my uh, My choice, I went with a theme this week. Um, and it's something that's present in every show, but I feel like especially you had some big secrets, um, that were going around, um, Batwoman, uh, Sophie, uh, let Kate, uh, let Batwoman in that she knows she's Kate Kane. Um, that was a big secret. Um, Andrea, you know, uh, 
<laughs> that the fact that she took the medallion away from Lena uh, and and got those powers from it uh, on uh, Watchmen. You had Will Reeves, the fact that I don't know, he can stand um, <laughs> and, you know, all the secrets that he's keeping from Angela and uh, Black Lightning. You had Henderson saying that, you know, he was the one organizing the insurgents the whole time. Uh, and on Titans, uh, you had Rose uh, that, that she's been working with Slade. And, you know, that's the only reason that she initially ended up at Titans Tower. This is a pleasing secrets. Yes. Mm -hmm. Secrets. All right, Sarah, we finished the episode. We finished the episode. Wow. Wow. Only five this week. Oh, man. It's going to be busy next week. Um, all right. Uh, that's that's the DCTV report for this week. You can find us on Twitter. I'm at Lil Eddie O'Hare. I'm at Sarah Netzley, S-A-R-A-N-E-T-Z-L-E-Y. And follow the show on Twitter at DCTV Report. Send along your emails to DCTV at wickedtheory.com. Also, be sure to subscribe to our show on your podcast app of choice and rate and review us. That helps more people find us. Check out our sister show, the Wicked Theory Podcast, uh, which is brand new. They the Bill started his new theme, the first episode, I think dropped last week. Uh, this has been a Wicked Theory Studios production. Executive producer Bill Sweeney. Visit us at wickedtheory.com. Shazam, everybody. Shazam. Shazam. Shazam.